So the point gap is 12 to 16. It's not so important that they're 12 or 16, but that they're in between there and that they're both the same. What is the same? Well, when you drag this through here, you want to feel the same amount of drag, right? Just a physical feeling. It should feel the same on both sides. Ignore the rust. It's the only one I had to use. It's important that the feeler gauge is clean. That's clean. It's just got some rust on it. You don't want oil on your feeler gauge. Now we're rotating the crankshaft to the LF mark. We're going to connect a timing light. Opening the points advances ignition. Closing the point gap decreases ignition advance. So that's 14. When you tighten down the uh, point screw here and the one inside here, this can sometimes change the point gap. It'll move this backing plate. So you have to check that once you've tightened it down. Especially when you're dealing with old stuff like this that's been mangled up in the past. So I just tightened the backing plate down and the points opened up about two thousandths. So I have to compensate for that. So that's where I've got You can see it's just overlapped. And so is the other one on uh, LF. So if you're going to you know, not be absolutely perfect, I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong on either side of this. It depends on fuel and such. Um, just make them the same, right? You don't want one on this side and one timing mark on that side. Loosen the backing plate, which we can see someone has already done more than once. So we can rotate this in relationship to that LF mark. You can see that the points are open and they shouldn't be. The light should just be off when it's lined up with that LF. We're looking for a very minute change in the crankshaft rotation which will bring the light on when we start to rotate it past LF. Now I'm on LF, but you can be on LF and be wrong. And I can't explain um, that here, but if your points are open like I just showed you that much, you're almost certainly in the wrong crankshaft position. You see how this wants to rotate by itself? That's the right position. In the other position, there's no resistance. This is on compression. So if you find your points open way too much, then rotate the engine over till you get to LF again. And so it's like that, okay? That's the light. Off. Oh, on. There's on. Off. On. Right there. Now we look down here for the. Oh, great. See that LF mark? It's there. And it's lining up. It's about a degree two at the most difference. Okay? That's where we're heading. The light should go just off or on on either side like right there okay here we go up to LF see it go off no you didn't see it go off but I did and then we get down a little bit to counterclockwise and there it's on so we're about well we got to adjust it some more well, there's the LF mark and I'm just going to tell you that it does work. And once you get right, like, hello. Well, that's obviously too far. Just past there, okay? The points will open. And that's what we're looking for for the left-hand points. Let's do the right-hand points. Because the left point fixes this timing with the backing plate. And then you adjust these points on the right for the right cylinder. What you do is set the probe on, on, on here. All right, so we've succeeded. Now we're going to turn the rotor counterclockwise until F aligns. Slightly loosen the right-hand stationary breaker contact retaining screws. 
So we're actually going to change the point gap on the right hand side slightly. That's what it says, it's normal. See this? So we're going to try it again. Right hand points. There's our F mark. Alright, see we're not quite lined up. Now let's see what happens as I rotate the crankshaft. We're rotating the crankshaft. There goes the light. Where are we? Well, we're past F. So we'll let it go back. Let's rotate. Uh-oh. Come on. There we go. Well, you can see we're a good three, four degrees off. Our light is on. Just at F. There's some movement. A little too much. Our light is on. Let's see if we can get it to go off. Okay, and it's off. And we're lined up. So we're within about a half a degree. So you loosen up these screws, adjust the contact breakers. And you say, well, wait a minute, you're supposed to have them both at 14 or 12 or whatever. Well, the book's telling you what to do. I haven't done this for about 30 years. Uh, I only moved them a couple thousandths. That's the way it's done. Um, so let's move forward. See this? This needs to be facing the way you see it now, not the way it was in the other pictures. You can get a short either against the backing plate or against the cover. Well, I couldn't get this to time out static with the light. I don't have a uh, strobe light, but if you look earlier, you'll see that where my screwdriver is there, this was way up here. Now that I've got it timed out here, it's running much better. I'm looking at 20 degrees. And I don't have an adequate explanation for that yet. See the lights off. And simply adjust this. If you move it in this way, you're decreasing the point gap. If you move it this way, then it moves this block against here. Okay, so you're opening the point gap. So, so that sim by simply um, placing the test light here, lining up F down here, it's static, then you can open and close this point until the light just goes off and on at F for the right cylinder. That's the trick. Now I've already adjusted the valves, but I'm going to show you what to do here. You go to the LT mark, which is next to the LF mark. Make sure that you're in the correct position. Like I told you on the points, where it's on compression and it wants to rotate. Because if you're in the position where it's not, then you're going to get the wrong number. All right, so assuming we've got the engine in the correct LT position for the left-hand side valves, both tappets will be loose. We slip a three thousandths in here, and you want it curved like that, for the exhaust, and it's two thousandths on the intake ice cold. When you've done that successfully, you rotate the engine counterclockwise, and now you'll be at the T position, and you adjust the right-hand side. Two thousandths on the intake, three thousandths on the exhaust. So LT and T. Two thousandths intake, three thousandths exhaust. See the LF and the LT? Okay. Also, I had to pull these carburetors off, and they were full of, you know, it was getting shellacky inside, not oxidation, but shellac. These carburetors on these 360s want to pull out on the right, on the left hand side. They want to pull out to the left. I couldn't get them out on the right, so I'm assuming that'll be true for you too. Carburetors come out this way. They're pretty straightforward. When you, you have a rubber diaphragm up here, a bunch of jets in there, clean them out, and you're ready to go, hopefully. I don't have the tanks on, so I'm just going to squirt some gas down inside these. That one's full now. Get them nice and full. I'm going to try and start it live. Hope I don't make a fool of myself. Whoops. Oh, 
pretty good for a 33-year-old uh, bike. Well, this is what I'll be driving for a bit. And that's how you do it. So that's what we call a backyard mechanic, a shade tree mechanic. Well, I haven't done a set of points since somewhere around 1982 or so. Well, anyhow, that went smooth enough. It's going to run okay. I'm going to do a test drive uh, tomorrow. Maybe I'll take you for a test drive. So the rest of my story is these points, these new points weren't adjust correctly because this cam where my finger is, is is shorter than the original ones, which I'll show you. So I could only adjust these out to like 14 thousandths. So I got to get hold of the uh, seller. It's a good thing about eBay, PayPal. I'm sure you'll make it right. So I had to grind down the original points, which are pretty sad, but that standoff is, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 thousandths longer, and it's got uh, 5,200 miles on it. So we'll see what happens. Well, we're getting there. We're going to see if it'll start on the first kick. I've had that carb sink tool since I was 13, since 1963. Anyhow, let's see what happens here. All right, it's in neutral. Hey, hey, right on. Well, we must be close. 5,191 miles. Come on, turtle fur. Let's go eat cat food. I might have to deworm her. She looks a little thin. It can happen. It happens to my cats at home. I don't know. I think it's from eating too many rats. All right, we made it down to the lake. There's more to the story. No humping. Stop that. That's your sister. None of that. Stop that. Now. It's the end of May. We don't usually see tarantulas in May. We see them in November. I have my gloves on. I'm gonna pick him up. I picked one up once. I'm not real brave about these things, but here we go. We're gonna pick him up. Come on, you. Up we go. Come on. Up. Up. Come on. Coaxed him on. Get him across the road here. Don't fall off. Don't fall off. Here we go. <laughs> God. All right, so there he is. Safe and sound, very brown. Hey, skunkers. Oh, come on, don't run off. That's the cat food, you know. That's for the feral cats. Skunkers, come back here. Well, we're making progress, but we're going to have to change those points. The original points just aren't up to snuff. So we got to do fork seals. Got to take care of those points. It's running a little better, but you know that story. And I put about 30 miles on it now. It's starting to run better. 